Aloha. My name is Associate Professor Mike Klemstein, and I am the Director of the Aquatic-Based Research Unit at Southern Cross University. Australia's weather and culture are conducive to outdoor activities. For example, the National Walking and Cycling Participation Survey identified that approximately 24 million Australians walk or cycle regularly. Additionally, there are three and a half million surfers in Australia and approximately three million swimmers. Although there are numerous health benefits associated with these activities, there are inherent risks due to exposure to ultraviolet radiation, which is a known mechanism for skin cancer. Australia is recognized as having the highest incidence of skin cancer in the world, including malignant melanoma, and the prevalence is expected to increase in coming years. Despite the high prevalence of melanoma, there is no national screening program, and this is due to there's a lack of evidence that would show it's effective at reducing rates of mortality. Therefore, Medicare, Australia's publicly funded healthcare insurance scheme does not fund skin cancer screenings. Also, the Melanoma Institute of Australia has reported that more than one half of all melanomas are first identified by the patient. However, in practice, we are not seeing this. Therefore, we conducted this study to see if patients attending a skin cancer practice were able to self-identify melanoma skin cancers. So we had 260 participants who attended a skin cancer clinic, either at the Gold Coast or Townsville, both of which are located in Queensland, Australia. All participants completed a questionnaire that included demographics, sun exposure, sun prevention strategies, and skin cancer risk and their history of skin cancer, personal and family history. The skin cancer doctor then inquired if they had any lesion of concern. All participants then underwent a full body skin check, which included artificial intelligence. From all participants, there were 260 participants that underwent a biopsy procedure for lesions suspected of being a malignant melanoma. All the biopsies were sent to a commercial histopathology laboratory for analysis. Of the 260 lesions sent for analysis, 83, which is approximately one third, were found to be malignant melanomas. These were primarily located on the back, about 44% and 11% on the shoulder and the upper leg. The size of the melanoma did not affect if the patient was able to identify the lesion of concern. Slightly more males than females, so 60% of males and approximately 40% of females were able to identify the lesion of concern. Interestingly though, participants were more likely to correctly identify an invasive malignant melanoma as opposed to an in situ melanoma. An in situ just means that the cancer cells were only in the top layer of the skin. Given that melanoma is associated with a high mortality and cost of treatment, particularly when it's invasive, meaning it's metastasized, the inability of laypersons to identify these cancerous lesions will likely lead to delayed treatment and possible adverse outcomes. We believe the current melanoma screening practices in Australia general practice should be revisited to improve patient outcomes.